Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, you're just going to have to deal with me, and I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I'm actually really excited about today. It's going to be fun. I've been doing a few solo episodes lately to work on the stream, right? And I think that's been really fun to do kind of meta work, right? How do we make the stream better uh, while on the stream? Because I don't know when I'm going to have time to work on it otherwise, right? So um, today, what I want to do is I want to dive in and work on some of the overlay stuff. Uh, I've been working on some state machines for subscriptions. Uh, I've got some stuff coming up with prints that is going to be specifically about subscriptions. So I don't want to work on that directly today. Uh, what I was thinking could be fun instead is just kind of playing with some ideas around um, different types of games and things that we could do on the stream. So um, as you as you all may be aware, uh, or you might be excited and or disappointed to learn that there is a, a tiny Jason that you can um, you can grow a beard on in in the app here or you can you can shave this is uh this is a CSS only little Jason that uh, Cassidy helped me make and it is one of my favorite things uh, we can also make it flap right and so this is like a it's like a little mini game wait where's my flap hello did we break it no, we broke it. How did we immediately, like this hasn't broken in months. How does, why today? Now that I want to talk about overlays, you're going to break on me. Let's see, let's just refresh this whole page. Okay. Now you're going to flap. There it is. There's the flap. Um, but so this is something that Cassidy and I built together. It's uh, it's a CSS only overlay. Um, another thing that you can do on the show is you can Drop a boop from the ceiling, um, and it'll bounce around the screen. Uh, you can also, if you do a party corgi, it'll count those. Um, I think it also counts Chris's, so if you've got the Chris party corgi, yeah, it does count those as well. Um, or does it? Did it just count that? Yes, it did. Okay, so um, so it counts, you know, party corgis from, from anyone who's got a party corgi emote around the ecosystem. Um, and I was thinking, like, what what other fun things could we do along that line today? I saw uh, Luke, who's in Luke O Codes, he's in the the chat today. Um, has some really fun stuff like pets and and uh, and a lava lamp that I thought was really cool. And so I, I was thinking, what could we do? Um, and so so uh, Luke, it is not P five. I'm using Matter JS. So actually, how about this? Let's. Let's switch over and look at the uh, at the desktop, and I can show you some of the stuff that we're doing here. Um, so I'm gonna go to this view, maybe this one. Good, good, good. Um, and before I start talking, before I forget, uh, do a quick shout out to the sponsors. We've got Rachel with us today doing live captioning as always. Thank you so much. She's here from White Coat Captioning. Um, that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which means a lot to me. So I thank you for for that. Thank you, all these companies, for for pitching in. Thank you, White Co Captioning and Rachel, for being here. Um, and with that being said, let's take a look at Matter.js. Not that one, this window. Matter.js. So this is this is what I'm using for the boops, um, and this is like a, a a pretty simple 2D physics library. And and simple was important for me because I don't know anything about like I I don't know the math that goes into these kinds of physics. I don't really know a lot about the the kind of visual boundary detection, collision detection stuff that goes into this type of physics. So um, for me, this is all very uh, out of my comfort zone. Um, but what I like about it is that they've got about a million demos. And so you can start looking at like what each of these things does and you can kind of smash things around and play. And by taking these uh, and finding one that, that did what I wanted or that was close to what I wanted, I was kind of able to, um, well, that's cool. I didn't, I don't even know a lot of these are, but see like, this is like if you were going to do a game and you wanted to, to have like shooting, uh, you can see what we would be hitting by by drawing this line. 
Um, but it's just got a lot of cool stuff like this, and I don't really know how most of it works. But it is it is exciting. Um, anyways, let me drop a let me drop a, a link to this so that y'all can go play with Matter JS because it is very fun. Um, so I know the count reset with the with the scene switch. I um, maybe someday I'll figure out how to make that persistent. I I thus far have decided that it's fun, but not that fun i don't know it's it's fun but not fun enough that i've decided to do the work to fix it <laughs> how about that that's where i'm at right now um but uh but yeah so what i thought like a couple things that i've been thinking about and, and y'all can tell me what you think would be fun um i have had this idea for a long time about having some kind of a a chat controlled vehicle that um you could drive around the screen and so my my thinking on that here's here's kind of where I'm at is I I love the idea of there being like a little submarine or something and and let me see if I can find this uh, let's see if we can find this thing that uh, that Dom made is that Dom's yeah no where is it. Somewhere in here, he made a he did this Photoshop and it's amazing. Um, where photos? Okay, here we go. This is the one. Um, so like, here's this little submarine where we're gonna go learn. And uh, I was thinking, how fun would it be to be able to let people drive this submarine around? Um. Like, this would be fun, I think. Uh, is Ben, Ben, come on now, Ben, trying to bury me? Can't be buried? Uh, oh, that was famous last words, I think. But, so yeah, so here's, here's kind of what I'm thinking is, um, how do we, <laughs> how do we make something fun that we can, that we can all control together? So the boops fall, the, um, the, the flappy Jason flaps and beard grows and everything, but how fun would it be if y'all could run a command like, uh, you know, up, down, left, right, and move something around the screen? So, so that's kind of what I was thinking today is how, how can we make that work? Um, so to do that, I'm going to, <laughs> here we go. Um, to do that, uh, I want to open up code here and let's see. So there's our, that we're going to get back into the subscriber stuff later with, with Prince. Um, but for now, what I want to do is I want to, I want to just kind of look at where we are. Um, so at the moment we've got our scenes and all of the scenes, like here's, here's how this, this works. Um, if you're looking at my, at my files over here. Uh, this is a toast site. So under the hood, the way that the scenes work on the show is their their website, and they are run on toast, which is uh, the the front end framework for kind of generating static assets that Chris Biscardi's been working on. Um, I love it. It's powered by Rust. It's super super fast, and what it gives me the ability to do is uh, to put up some pretty kind of compressed files the the output of this is is pretty teeny tiny and and that's good for me because I don't really want to deal with with huge things I don't really want to deal with a lot of of complexity and you can kind of see like what's coming out here is is modules like ES modules so the the generated code is actually pretty friendly to work with and I am a fan of such things so I can I persist a page between scenes I could I have not done it um, so my, my thinking on this is like, I can make this into a full app and there are a lot of ways that I could make that work. Um, but there, there are things that I haven't done yet. Like right now, the request for Twitch data that comes in. Um, so if you look down at the, the bottom of the screen here, it says the custom Twitch overlays and interactions. That's the title pulled in from Twitch and the, or I guess it's pulled in, is it from Twitch or is it from... It's from the Learn with Jason API. 
Um, and then like the sponsors, those images, those are pulled in from the Learn with Jason API and the chat is pulled in from Twitch. And all of those requests are done asynchronously. Um, but right now I have it set up like you, you'll notice it takes a minute for everything to pop in because I made those requests blocking instead of not doing that, which was, uh, you know, a mistake on my part that makes the, the page loading a little janky. But I could absolutely do, um, I could set this up in such a way that the, the page itself was static and I would just move between the different uh, scenes like with routes, which would mean that I could do stuff with, uh, um, what's the, what's it? frame or motion or like one of those, those animation libraries that would let me do some really cool like animation and interactive stuff that I think would be super exciting. Um, I have not done that yet. I mean, that could be another, another route to go down, but, um, I don't know. What do you think, chat? What's, what's more interesting to you? Do you want to see, do you want to see like a, a little, probably won't get all the way through it, but a crack in a submarine game. Do you want to turn the scenes into uh into a single page app? What, what, what do you think? What's, what's going to make you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone? Huh? Submarine. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Um, so I, yeah, I think the, the submarine part now, the interactive thing though is super interesting and I'm going to look into that because I do think it would be super fun. Um, but I, yeah, I do think that, uh, I think the submarine is kind of a more interesting problem to try to solve right now. So, so anyways, looking at all this, the way that this actually works is I have all of my scenes set up here and then I've got pages and my pages go to, uh, I get this index which pulls in some of the stuff that I need to figure out where I am. Uh, Socket Studio is how I can, how it's the service. Someday this is going to be a business that y'all are going to be able to use. I'll get it launched eventually. Um, this is how I talk to uh, Twitch and it gives me subscription events and chats and commands and all those things. Um, and then these pull in my content, um, lower thirds and the overlays. So I get all of my overlays here in so I get my Socket Studio client. I wrap that around the main content. Um, so I've got my my big overlay, and then there is a top bar. So that's the um, the gradient bar at the top. And like this is one of those really subtle things that I did that I don't know if anybody's ever noticed. But those gradients are animated. So if you watch them, they'll change throughout the show. They'll just kind of like pulse between the different colors. Um, I don't, I spent a long time on it. I don't know if anybody notices. I like them a lot. Uh, and then we've got this fragment here where if we're in the browser, we set up a router and we get the, the content and then we add the overlays. So the overlays are the invisible part. So if you, right now you don't see the overlays, but if somebody runs like one of the commands, like adult supervision, that little box that, that you're seeing over there, that's the overlay. So that just kind of sits on top of things and then things are positioned. Um, and then the uh, the bottom bar is this this gradient right here, right right there. Um, and then the lower third is a whole other section in components. Oops, components. And then I can look at the lower third here. And this pulls in like that's the bar at the bottom that's got the 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 logo at the left or sorry the chat bar here. And then if we go over this way, we've got the the title. And then all the way over is the the logo. So here's the logo. Details has got the the episode, and then that rotating banner underneath with the details and and sponsors and everything, and then this chat box. So um, the chat runs using Socket Studio stuff. It just pulls in the Twitch chat. Uh, I figure out what color somebody should be based on their role, and then um, use the the Twitch chat based on my Twitch channel to then build out chat so this this is under the hood this is powered by uh some pretty cool stuff but here all we have to do is just get that chat right so we just loop through the chat and we build it out um why am i logging i don't I shouldn't be logging that that's that's a waste of that's a waste of things to do um but so we get out our our message and if there's not an html message because i do some sanitization um, and then we do more sanitization this is why you can use the marquee tag but you can't uh, do like H1s anymore. Or uh, I remember when we first figured out that you could do HTML injection on my overlays, 
We did that with like somebody was putting CSS in here. It was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was a mess. But yeah, so now we we clean it up so you can play with images and marquees. The images only allow the the source tag and the alt tag, um, and that that keeps keeps y'all from you like you can wreak what I would consider to be an a, an appropriate amount of havoc on on the chat box. Then that just gets built out into a list item. So th this is one of the things that I'm really excited about with this is that it just becomes code, right? Like we're not trying to figure out how to deal with the the IRC part of Twitch chat or, you know, getting into into third party libraries. It's all well, I guess it's Saga Studio is a third party library, but it kind of abstracts it all the way into a hook. I just get the chat out and I'm happy with the chat. Um, and then we do kind of the same thing with a bunch of this other stuff. So the details, uh, this is a hook that I wrote for my own API, the, the Learn with JSON API, so that I can get out the episode details and whether or not it's loading. Um, this ends up right now kind of doing weird blocking stuff, so I should fix that at some point. I'm not gonna not gonna stress about it today though. And then um, we also get the overlays. And so the overlays are like, there's a bunch of them. So there's the beard game, there's the boop drop, there's the effects, which are like when, when you run a sound effect or something. Um, and then there's the emote counter and that. So the emote counter is like up in the, the, the top up there. And then you've got the, the effects are, are over in the far corner there. The, um, the boop drop is actually like the whole top part uh, it, up to the lower third. Um, I love that y'all are just going all in on the marquees here. Um, but so the, uh, no, so, uh, so Alex, Socket Studio is actually, I, like I'm building it. It will eventually be a software as a service platform that anyone can use to power their stream. At the moment, it is a branded thing that I have built that is only available for me. But all the code is out there if you want to look at it. It's on... Uh, Socket Studio, and you can look. This is the front end for it, um, and so this is this is how all this stuff works under the hood. So if you look at like the the hooks, um, then we're we're pulling in like all of these uh, like subscriptions from a back end that is that's the Socket Studio back end, which is like a GraphQL thing that I've built that does all sorts of stuff and is kind of a pain. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, Lord Lord Ginster Bush. The, um, yeah, the whole overlay that you're looking at is made out of HTML and CSS. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is make all this stuff, uh, more fun. So I want to take, I want to take and be able to get my commands here. So I'm going to go into the effects, which are here. And so the effects, let's see, we're going to go into use sound effect. So let's look at use sound effect. And this one is a state machine. So I'm gonna, I've, I've done content on state machines and I've got more content on state machines coming up. Um, we've got actually several episodes on state machines coming up. So I'm not going to go too deeply into this. Uh, if you wanna learn more, this is gonna be a really great episode for that, uh, getting into more state machine stuff with David. And then I'm also doing some, I'm really excited to see what this is because I honestly have no idea what Abby's even talking about and uh, and I'm super excited to learn. But that's going to be a lot of State Machines content. And remember, you can go uh, and add the calendar and you'll just kind of get a list on your calendar of what's coming up so that you can you can keep up to date and, and come hang out with us. Um, but so what this does under the hood is it has a machine that checks whether or not we've got a command and whether or not one's active and then uh, it does a queue so that it shows the effects one after the other. So if y'all were to like spam a um, a particular command, it would run again and again, uh, kind of in a loop, uh, which we've seen sometimes, like sometimes uh, m multiple people have the same idea to use the same command and it'll play two or three times. Um, so that's a cleanup thing that, that eventually I should probably do where we'll go in and make this queue. And if it's already playing, then it would it would skip that one and, and so on and so forth. But for the time being, nah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so here we go. We've got the sound effect and this is the part that I'm interested in. So we get this current command, right? 
and the current command is what's going to let us determine whether or not this is a thing that we want to respond to. So I'm going to create a new component and let's call this component submarine. And in here, uh, I need to look and see how I'm actually building this stuff. So let's look at one of the simple ones. Here's the boop drop, pulls in, preact. Let's just grab that part out. And so I'm going to start there with our submarine and I'm going to export function submarine. And that's going to take no props, I don't think. Um, and for now, we probably just want to return some kind of a, of a submarine. So what I'm going to do for now, I think, is I'm going to see if I can find one that's free. Eventually, I will probably draw one of these. Um, but if I can if I can find one that's royalty free, then I don't want to I just don't want to get this pulled down or anything on YouTube for using somebody's images without permission. Anybody got a submarine I can borrow? I don't think don't think I'm gonna find one here. Nope. Okay. You want to just make a submarine real quick? Let's do a let's do a quick and dirty submarine. So I'm gonna create a new thingy in here, and we'll uh, we'll do one of these, and then we'll get a like an oval. Let's see, we can do it like that kinda, and then I want my submarine to be a little bit like front heavy, like so, um, and then we'll give it like. Take one of these and we'll just kind of go bloop. Feels kind of submarine-y, right? Um, then I want to give it a like a periscope up top, so we'll do one of these. This is a bad submarine. It's okay. All right. The goal isn't to be good at this stuff, right? The goal is to have a good time. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's get rid of this. We're gonna open up this fill, and we'll make it the same. Good. I'm happy. Then I'm gonna merge. Oh wait, I'm not yet. I want to copy this. Nope. Copy this bit, and I'm gonna move it down. No. Copy. Let's move into a new. No. What is that? Give me this. That's what I want. Copying you. And I'm coming out here and I'm pasting and I want to flip this. How do I, uh, if I just want to like flip it horizontally, is that not a thing that I can do anymore? What am I, didn't this used to just work? I don't know. Let's do it this way. Goodbye. Okay. Then I can bring this straight down. And now we've got a really like jankerific submarine that looks kind of submarine-ish and I would say close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. So I'm going to take these bits and I'm going to merge them all into one thing. And now I'm, now I'm happy. Um, and then maybe we'll give it like a, a porthole so that we can see out of it. And that is going to be a subtraction so that we get a hole. Hey, look at our submarine. Okay, so this is, you know, I, I'm probably not winning any design awards today, but I've at least got a submarine I can use. So now I'm going to crop this out, make it a little bigger. Actually, can I just export this directly? Yes, I can. I'm going to do it as a PNG. Um, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to get rid of it. So let's just export our submarine. And let's make it a let's make it a color that I like. Let's make it. Um, oh, you know what we should do? Let's take one of. Let's take one of the colors from our setup. Uh, we've got in here our styles. We've got globals, and let's make it a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine, and so then we can drop that in here. 
There it is, and then I'm gonna give it, because that's a little jarring without a border, I'm gonna get the black color, and we'll give it a... <laughs> Am I hurting you right now, Luke? Uh... <laughs> um, so there's, there's a, a rough submarine vibe. All right, that's kind of fun. I'm happy. Uh, let's take this, shrink it down a bit. That feels like an acceptable submarine. So I'm going to, uh, I need to turn these outlines good. Now I can export this as a PNG. And I think I'll do it with some space. So let's do it like this, submarine. Got a little bit of space. We're gonna make it a PNG, we're gonna export it. And now I have a submarine that we can use. So in my, my static stuff, I'm going to drop in the submarine. Oh no, you kept the background. I need to turn off the background. Okay, so you're going to go away. Loop. And then this should now not have a background anymore. It doesn't. Okay, and let's make it tiny as well. We'll just get rid of a whole bunch of junk on it. I love this tool. So uh, yeah, now it's now it's under four kilobytes. That makes me happy. So I'm gonna dump this, and then I can go over to here. Oh wait, did I just turn that into a JPEG? Oh, I sure did. You know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. It was 37%, and that's gonna eat up a bunch of time. So I'm not even gonna stress about it. Um, let's see. Uh, what is this link? Is it, this is a risky click? I guess it's Wikipedia, right? So it's only like medium. Oh, hey, look at that. That is, uh, yep. That's why the periscope's there, is so that you know it's a submarine. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's see here. Uh, now that I've got our submarine, I'm gonna get rid of this one. We're gonna put the actual PNG in there instead replace okay so now we've got static we've got our our submarine and yeah okay i'm happy so then what i can do is i can in here just have an image source um, and because this is toast the way that this works is anything in in static just ends up at the root of the site so i'm going to do submarine dot png eventually i'm going to move this out um call it submarine and we're going to start there so then i'm going to go out to my uh overlays stream blitz overlays and we're going to pull in submarine from submarine and again, so this is the reason the .js is here is we're using ES modules uh, pretty close to the way that they work natively. So you have to include the, the extension. That's a, a, a feature of Toast that I really like is that it's not doing anything magic. So then we can go in here and we can do the submarine. And if I run this, which let's see if it's going to do the thing. Um, let's go with it might complain because of this state machine stuff. So I think I might need to turn this off, but let's, uh, hmm. Let's see if it works. And if it, if it explodes, we'll figure out how to back that out. Cause I feel like when we worked on this last time, it, uh, it just didn't want to do what we wanted it to do. So I'm going to run NPM run build. And it doesn't like, I think this is the state machines thing that we ran into. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't like the state machine. So I'm actually just going to back this out because we ended up doing it in a different uh, repo. So no more state machines. Okay. And then that means that, where was I using that though? Nowhere. It's gone. It's out. 
that was just a page. That's right. We kind of, oh wait, npm. Um, I need to remove the stuff that I'm not using anymore. So we'll get rid of, am I using this anymore? Let's look. X date. That one is using it. Um, which one is it using? X state react, X state react. Okay, so let's get rid of the FSM. And then we're going to run an npm install. And then we're going to npm run build. What are you mad about? Cannot read property replace of undefined. That seems like something else. Socket Studio. Am I missing? Oh, I have environment variables. I need to run Netlify dev. There they are. So these are coming in from uh, my .n file. Uh, they are also coming in from, from Netlify, but because I have local settings that are different, I, they get overrided. So, okay. Now, here we go. Hey, look at that. Look at that submarine. Um, so the next thing that I want to do, we can go to like one of these. We'll go to monologue. Um, and so there's no, there's no video here. And these are actually, because I know exactly what resolution I'm using these at, I, I have them like hard configured to be a certain size. So that is a little bit jarring if you're looking at this like, why? Why does this look so janky? It's because these are expected to be at exactly uh, 1280 by 720, I think. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do we do next? Here's what I want to do next. I want to get, I want to get commands coming in and I want to see, I've never actually tried this. I want to see if commands that we run are just visible or if I need to do something else. Look at that. There's the chat coming in. See? Um, so here, what I want to do is I want to go into the submarine and I'm going to uh, import, where is it? I want to get the effects and the effects are in the hooks. And I just want the current command. So I want use Twitch chat. Oh, that's all I wanted anyways. So I'm going to pull in from Socket Studio. And then I put in that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log the command. Because um, what I'm doing is I'm getting current command and aliasing it to command so that we can see what's going on. But let's uh, let's try this. So I'm going to stop and restart. And then... Uh, yeah, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up on the chat. I just, uh, I did just auto mod something. Um, let's keep it, keep it clean in the chat, y'all, with the the terminology. Um, okay, so I am. This is running, and now what I want to see is I think what should happen if I reload the page is we should be able to say any command. So I'm going to do up. And we got a command, and our command is up. Okay, so let's try another one. Down. Right, and these are all just coming in the way that I want. Okay, hey, this is exciting. So check this out, y'all. We are, um, uh, hacking was not the, hacking was not the word in that that got it moderated. So um, we are, now 
able to kind of control this thing. So here's what I want to do. I want to set up some, some basic config here. So we're going to do a div with a class name of submarine. And then I want this submarine to be on the screen. So then I'm going to give this, or I guess we'll, we should probably call this like wrapper. And then we can give this one a class name of submarine for real. Um, so then down here we can say in our styles, we've got lots of things that, uh, that we could, we could do. And I'm going to say, I can stick it at the bottom of this one for now. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's do submarine wrapper. And I want to make this width hundred percent. Uh, height 100% and let's put a border of one pix. Actually, let's probably go uh, more 10 pix solid red so that we can see what's going on. And then I also want to make this position uh, relative because then what I want to do with the uh, submarine is I want to make this one position absolute and let's give it a width. Let's make it like a hundred pixels with a height auto. Um, and then I want to set like the, the bottom, or let's do it this way. Let's do a top of 75% and we'll do a left of like 5%. Um, and I'm using percentages for a reason because I want to, yeah, I know my dimensions, right? So I think what I can do is I can do, um, I can just bounce this thing around the screen based on commands. So let's, let's see if we can make this work. So I'm going to, I'm going to save this, I'm going to save this. And then I just want to make sure that when I'm looking at this, that the styles got picked up and that things are sitting where I want them to sit. So if I reload. Okay. So we can see now we've got the submarine wrapper, our submarines down here. I'm going to tweak these values a little bit cause I don't want them to be uh, quite so what is happening? Something weird is happening. Where's my beard game submarine wrapper. And then my submarine, there's my submarine. So I want this to be, let's call it 80 pixels. And we're going to make the top value, uh, 90% and the left is going to be actually, I like that. Let's, let's set it down in the corner. Um, Okay, so 90% and zero. I spelled height auto wrong, so I guess I didn't need that at all. So let's uh, let's just go clean that up then, right? So we can go down here, we can say we want the top to be 90% and we want the left to be zero. Um, so then, knowing those details, now what I can do is, oh wait, 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 wait. How can I? I can make this easier because I can set I can set CSS properties. What's easier to do here? I guess I can just inline style this and then that'll, that'll be fine. Um, so if we so if we have commands, right? So I can then use effect and that means I need to pull it in. So let's import use effect. And I think I also don't want to re-render the page. So I'm going to use ref from preact hooks. And then in here, I can say ref equals use ref. And in here, I can set up a command that's only going to change when the current command changes. Um, and inside of it, uh, I will then make the ref ref. And so now I can get at this Dom element without re-rendering the entire react component. So that means that I can do like my submarine. Is... Oh, we've got echoes because the, this one's also active. So let me, let's see, let's mute this one so that we don't get doubles, but yeah, it'll, it, that also works in here. So like if I run one of these commands, um, it'll show up on both screens. 
Uh, ooh, that actually brings up a good point. I should probably... What do you think? Should the... The alerts should take precedence. They should go over the top of the submarine. And that's okay. So the submarine can stay back. That's fine. What about the boops? Are the boops... Let's see. The boops are currently in front of the submarine. That seems correct. Yeah. Yeah, because then you can dive the submarine into the boops, and that's funny. <laughs> that's funny to me, at least. So, okay, that, that seems fine. So we'll leave that. We'll leave that as is. Um, wait, the sound effects aren't making sound? Oh, you know what I bet it is? I bet it's this. Somebody run a sound effect. Let's try it. <clears throat> you hear that one? Oh, so we would need to add code. Is that right? <laughs> okay, perfect. Yes. All right, I forgot to enable that thing. Um, cool. So, all right, now, now we have our submarine. How are we doing on time? We've got a, we've got, actually we've got a while. Wow, we're doing okay. So, now that we've got this submarine, I want to... I want to move the submarine to the left or right based on commands, right? And so I think the way that we want that to work is we're going to do ref current to give us our submarine. And then I want to do submarine styles. Let's do this. We're going to get um, the... Actually, we should check here. If the command, and what is our command name? Are you going? Here's my command, and the command has a command. So if I, oh, that's silly, but yes, that's fine. So if the command command um, is going to have to be one of the ones that we allow, so we'll say uh, up, down, left, right. And then we get to remember if it's includes. I think it's includes because it just auto completed for me. So if it's one of those commands, we want to do something. Um, and since I don't want to wrap this whole thing in an if statement, we'll just early return if it's not set up. And that's because I forgot this curly brace. Okay, so then uh, once we get down here, let me close this up so we can see what's going on. So we've got, these are the commands we're gonna listen for. And we're going to have our submarine, that's our, our ref current. And then what we can do is we can switch do we even need to switch? Can I just, it's probably easier. Let's just switch on the command, command, and we'll do a case up, and I want the submarine styles. I don't like that, that feels, that feels messy. Um, can I, I want to like access the, let's just run some console commands out here. So if I get, um, let's let sub equals uh, document query selector submarine. Is this even legible for y'all? This is like kind of, kind of teeny tiny. So I've got my submarine. And then if I want to get the sub style, It pulls all those things in, and then if I do sub style left, it's nothing. That's not right. So, style property, inline style, I don't want. Let's see, Zell. Zell's been on the show, he knows things. Uh, 
element style font size, but that's what I did and it wasn't set. And it is set. Because if we go and look at it over here on the submarine, it's got this value set of, of 90%, right? And so why wouldn't that show up? Right? Like, am I missing something, y'all? Get computed style? Where's, wait, where is get computed style? What's the API for this? Why don't I know? I've used this before. What is it? get computed style, and then I pass in an element, and then what? Get computed style, here's the computed styles. Okay, I can do that. So we're going to here, get computed style of sub, am I in here? Of sub. And then we can do styles get property value left. Okay, that's that's kind of correct. Uh, computed and not percentage is kind of a bummer, but I can I can live with it, I guess. Um, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to I guess we can just kind of figure out like if it's if it's less than zero, we would be able to um, so we can do like a const styles equals window get computed style for the submarine. We don't even need to do the, the shortcut here. We can, er, yes we do, because I want to change it later. So um, so we've got our styles, we've got our submarine, and then I want to, if the command is up, I want the current left is going to be styles, get property value left and I want to parse that as an integer so that we get like a zero, right? So that way zero picks will become zero. Yes. So then if I have a current left then I can say uh, new left is going to be uh, current left is greater than or equal is greater than zero, um, and we'll say or actually let's do it at ten. Then we'll say the new left is going if it's going to move left. Then it would be current left minus ten. Otherwise, it would be. zero. And that way you can only go to the very left edge of the screen. And that seems okay. Um, I think that's fine. So then we can do left equals new left. Do I have to set it as pixels? Probably. This is up. Let's try left. How about that? So I'm going to start it at left and then I'm going to move the left to like 100 pixels so that we can just test this. And then save that as well so that we stop seeing the, the chat in the console. So then I'm going to, let's just give this a little test. A little test. Okay, so here's our submarine. 
And so if this works, y'all should be able to control it right now by running the left command. Command is undefined in submarine JS 14. Submarine JS 14. Uh oh. So if at first there is no current command, so that would give us a, an empty or like an undefined. So we can just can check for that and bail on it. So then try that one more time. No errors. Let's see it chat. Run a, run a lefty. No, you're unhappy again. Submarine styles is undefined. Yeah, I screwed this up, didn't I? Is it just regular style? Okay, so let's try that one more time. If this one doesn't work, I'm gonna start doing it in the, the console at first. Okay, so let's reload. Give me a left. Hey, look at it go, look at it go! <laughs> okay, this is great. This makes me really happy. So, um, so here's what I wanna do next, is I wanna see if I can transition um, ease in out and we'll make it a little bit like slow. So maybe like 300 milliseconds and that I think fingers crossed, we should get like a, an animation when it moves. So let's try that again. All right, everybody move it left. Look at it go. Okay, so this is fun. This is super fun, right? Um, and so now what I wanna do is I want to just kind of duplicate this so that we can do it for the other direction. So let's go with... Oh, buckets, did that just work? <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> um, and so then we can uh, just return here so that we don't end up hitting any of the other cases. So I want to write... Uh, we can do a const current. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to. Nah, it doesn't matter. We can do current parse int of styles get property value. And we're going to say right, uh, left. I feel like I can just do. Hmm. That's, uh, this is a little repeat yourself ish. So I can, I'll have to figure this out, but let's go current is less than, I'm just going to hard code this for now. Um, let's go in and figure out what the submarines furthest possible left can be. Um, so let's set the left. Up here, we'll just kind of boop, 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 boop. Probably like 1100, maybe? No, nope, that's too far. What about maybe 700? But is that going to be... How wide are you? You are 100 pixels wide, right? So I could do wi window... No, that won't work because then for... I need to get like the inner width of the, of this thing, um, which I can do with, it's like what document, query selector, submarine wrapper, and then we can do get inner, inner width. Is it wrapper inner text? Anybody remember this off the top of their head? Get bounding client wrecked. Get wrecked. Did you see uh, Cassie? Cassie Codes has that. Um, this made me really happy. She has a new sticker coming out. 
Cassie codes. Let's go to our media. Look at this. That's a, that's going to be a sticker, and it makes me extremely happy. Um, and you should definitely go get on that waiting list because that's going to be really fun. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So we've got our bounding client wrecked, and then if I do a width, we know how wide it is. Okay. So so here's what I can do then. Then what I can do is I can set. Um, I can set this to be the wrapper and the submarine is going to be wrapper dot query selector dot submarine. Okay, so now we've got the wrapper on the outside, the submarine in the middle, um, and now we can kind of touch all that stuff. So I'm going to move this ref up to the div instead. And now, what I'm able to do is change the submarine style, but I can also get the go max left will be um, it was already so it was going to be a uh, wrapper get already forgot bounding client rec bounding client Rack dot width minus 100 because that's our that is the size of our submarine right so the furthest left that we want to go is where the submarine would be against the right side not where it's 100% off the screen so then we can say if the current is less than the max left minus we need like a we need like a movement size here so uh, movement distance and we can set that to 10 for now and then what I want to do is just kind of make these a little movement distance. Um, that way, when I decide inevitably later that I want that to be something different, I can, um, you know, make that make that better. So then what I can do is I can do current left plus movement distance, or we can make it max left. Okay, so if you try to move too far to the right, it'll it'll stick at the right. If you try to move too far to the left, it'll stick at the left. That makes me happy. And then we can do a submarine style left equals new left pixels. Okay, so this is not, not as dry as I want it to be, but it does the job. So let's see if we can get left to right movement working here. Um, so we'll give that a shot. Wait, what don't you like? I must have missed something. New left has already been declared. Okay. So I need to do this a little bit differently. Um, I want to see something gross. What if I do it like this? I mostly just want to see if this works. This is going to need some refactoring to not be very upsetting, but um, I'm I'm pretty okay with it for now. So let's give that a shot. All right, y'all, let's go left and right. So let's go right. We're doing it. No, it doesn't like it. It failed on. Can't access lexical defin declaration current left before initialization. Oh. Boo. Screwed it up. Okay, one more time. One more time. This is a mess. We will go and clean up that mess. Probably. Okay, let's try right again. Here we go. Right. Is it doing it? It still doesn't like that. So type error, submarine dot stuck. Oh my God, I did it again. Oh, I'm very, like my, my automatic pluralized styles, that part of my brain is, it's fighting hard. Right. 
Look at it go. Um, why do all the right things say left? That is a really good question. It's because we're doing um, absolute positioning. So when we're moving the submarine around, what it looks like is happening is that it's moving right. But what we're actually doing is changing the, um, where is it? Content monologue, overlays, submarine wrapper. We're, we're changing the left position to be higher or lower, right? So when you run, if you want to run, somebody wants to run the right command, um, we'll actually see that value update to either go, yeah, 10 pixels higher, which moves it further away from the left, or it'll decrement by 10 pixels to take it closer to the left. So that's kind of how we're getting the, the motion. Now I want to do one more thing. When you move to the right, I want this thing to turn. So that is going to require me to do a, um, a transformation. So uh, that transformation is going to be transform. Uh, we're going to do, can I just like, I can flip this thing. And the way that you do that is you scale X negative one, maybe. There it is. Hey, oh, okay. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the transform on both of these submarine style transform is going to be uh, scale at, or what was it? Scale X negative one for this one. And we'll take that same thing and put it up here and we'll make it one on this side. So now what we should see when we move it around is that when you move right, it should flip around and turn right. And when you move left, it should flip it back around and turn left again. So let's try that again. Let's go right. Oh, oh, it's fighting. Then we go back left and it flips left. Ah, this is fun. Okay, so now we have we have a submarine. Y'all can control it. Um, this is this is nice and fun. I am I'm very into that. Uh, if I used absolute right instead of left, I could have it positioned relative to the camera source. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's definitely I could I could put it wherever, right? Um, then you could deliberately avoid your face. Well, so the way that it's set up right now is that I think let me double check. Uh, let's go to interview. Nope, not that. Let's do pair programming. So right now it would be able to get right on top of our faces. But I think how this will work is the content. There is a way. How do I do it? I've done this before and I'm not remembering how I did it. Bottom bar, lower third. I don't know. Um, I have some logic that I can set if I need to that will uh, change out like where this box lands so that it uh, it would skip like the videos on the right if we wanted. But I think for now, just for fun, we can let this kind of go wherever. And if, if the chat really wants to be mean, they can just sit that submarine right on my face like, like jerks. Um, but yeah, so this, I think this will be really fun, right? So, um, and maybe we can make the, the distance a little bit greater and let's go with, I don't know, 30. So it'll move a little bit farther each time. Okay, so now it should, it should move a little bit further whenever you, uh, yeah, a little bit further each time. So it's, yeah. So, okay, that seems fun. I like that. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to, this is the problem, Nikki, is I, I say things and then I realize what I've just said and I realize that the chat is going to take it as a challenge and, and then I have regrets. So, um, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to figure out how to do this on the up and down axis. So 
maybe, maybe, maybe what we can do is, you know, I, I feel like I need to clean this up because it's, it's just so messy right now. I wonder if what we could do What's the right, what's the right solution here? Uh, maybe we... I don't care. I'm not going to deal with it right now because I feel like I'm going to get myself in a rabbit hole and then we won't get it, we won't get the rest of this done. So instead, let's do up. Um... In the up case, we want to basically do all the, uh, let's actually, maybe we can write this better by doing these both at once, right? And so I wanna do a, um, how do I wanna do this? We wanna go with uh, direction equals command, command um, up and if the, Here's, so here's my thinking. We we need to go up and down. So I can say that if we're going up, we want to remove a value. I need to actually write this as valid code, I suppose. Um, and if we want to go down, we need to add a value. So we can say distance will be movement distance times direction. So now we can either go uh, 30 pixels increased in the value or 30 pixels decreased in the value. Um, then what we can do is we can do the same thing that we were doing before where we get the uh, current top and that current top is gonna be parse int styles get property value top and the uh, max top is going to be wrapper get bounding client rect height minus, how tall is this thing? Let's find out. It is 58 pixels tall. So let's just call that an even 60. Um, or actually, let's let it dive a little bit off the screen. That'll be kind of fun. Um, so it can dive halfway off the screen. And then, then we want to calculate new top is going to be current top is Oh, no, we wanted we want to make this into a statement. We we're going to let new top and then if current top is less than max top minus new distance or movement distance then we want new top to be current top plus distance. Oh wait, no, that's actually not even true. We don't need to do that anymore because what we can do is we can do movement to current top plus distance and that if it's less than max top and current top is greater than zero plus distance, because now this could be a negative value, right? Um, so if it's greater than zero, then we would do new top equals distance. Otherwise, it's going to just stay the same. It just won't move again after that point. So then down here, we can do submarine style left or top equals new top pixel. Is that going to work? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, 
let's see. Yeah, let's give it a let's give it a shot. So running this assuming I didn't typo anything. Okay, nothing exploded there. Let's see if we get errors in the console. Uh, request block, that's fine, that's fine. Let's try some up and downs. Up. Up. Down. <laughs> then we can move it to the right. And we can go up. Up. Okay, so what happens when we, when we get all the way down? Oh, um, so it shouldn't go down any further. I don't think. Yeah, it sticks down. But what I want to do is I want to make that overflow hidden so that it like dives under the screen. So let's have the submarine wrapper go overflow hidden. And then let's dive it back down to the bottom and make sure that that works. So let's go down, down, down. I'm abusing my moderator privileges. Down. Okay, so that's gone. So then if I get rid of the border, yeah, it'll just sink all the way to the bottom and, and sit. Okay. So that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, y'all. We did, I, I feel like we did okay. So let's get rid of the border. Let's go overflow hidden. 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 And like we're good. We did it, I think. Let's try that one more time. Let's go play, let's go play again. Okay. All right, everyone. Dive it. Down. Down. Oh, I just sat there. Where's my... Up. Down. Up. Why won't you go down further? Hmm. Maybe it needs to start in a different place. Let's see. So if I go... Find my submarine, it's defaulting to the top of 90. So I wonder if I, I wonder if I need to like take this thing, let's turn off that and maybe we can make this one like a, Or what would it even be? Five hundred pixels. So that would start it at the bottom, like it. it mm, I don't really like that though, because that seems. What if we calc it? Um, hundred percent minus thirty pixels, right? Because then it kind of starts just chilling on the the bottom of the screen. And then our left, maybe our left is actually like 100% minus um, 100 pixels. And maybe we just start it with a transform of um, because then that would not be that, it would just be scale of one. So now we've got like a submarine chilling in the bottom and you can you can start flying it around and that would be that would be <laughs> barrel roll. <laughs> That's funny. Um okay, so this seems this seems okay. I think maybe we'll we'll start there because it it overrides them pretty much immediately once they get there um and that puts us at a good position for kind of sticking it on the screen where we want without relying on absolute values, which I'm pretty happy about. And then we can default this transform in here so that it's present. Okay, so now we have transition. We've got this transform. We've got the left and height set. Okay, so I'm going to try this one more time. Assuming it looks and works the way that we expect, I'm just going to deploy it. We're just going to see what happens if we take this to production right now. So, all right, everyone roll this thing around. Let's go up, let's go down. Okay, let's go left, let's go right. Beautiful, it's beautiful. This is, okay, YOLO, let's ship it. 
Um, let's let's do it in here. I'm gonna use the visual thing so that y'all don't have to watch me dig through here. Why is that even showing up? Let's ignore DS Store. We're just not there. Don't care. Um, so now we've got the package lock. We want that updated. We've got the chat. That's getting rid of the, the unnecessary. So we can just do like a chore, remove console log. But ow. And then this one, we're going to chore, ignore system files. What? Oh. And then this one, we got rid of the uh, unused package. So we can add these two and say chore remove unused packages and then down here now we get into the interesting stuff so we have the submarine we've got the new component we've got am i still console logging anything in here no okay i've got my submarine got my overlays so I'm pretty happy with all of that. I I do need to uh to like refactor that left and right, but I know how I'm gonna do it. I just don't know that we need to do it in the, the few minutes that we have left. So let's call this one a feature and we're gonna say add chat controlled submarine. Okay, so now that we've got that, I can check here. Good. I'm gonna push. We're going we're going straight to main, no pull request today. Um, and now that I've got that, I'm going to open my Netlify account. And it opened in the wrong window. That's fine. Let's go in here. So this is the, the site building. This should all happen pretty dang fast. Oh yeah, so uh, the the prefixes that I'm using are they're a bad ha a good a good habit a habit a carryover from when I was doing product um, product engineering at IBM and we were generating automatic change logs. So using that convention where you prefix with chore or feature or fix or there's a few others, what um, what we were able to do is run a script called conventional change log. I think that would automatically build a change log with what it actually changed since we cut the last release. It's um, it's really, really nice. So, okay, so this is deployed, which means if I reload the overlays here. So let's refresh. And we have a submarine. Okay, y'all, you wanna, you wanna fly the submarine around the screen a little bit? <laughs> Great, it's going straight for my face, isn't it? Good. This makes me very happy. Um, oh, that's interesting that it just redeemed boop. Is that it? Whoa, does that work with like miscellaneous stuff? What is... So it says I redeem boop. What if I just redeem something? No, I have built it. I'm super happy that I added this submarine now. I immediately have regrets. Um, ooh. Hoof you, da. All right. So that's You know exciting. what could be really fun, actually, chat? What if we made it so that you could change the image? so that what was on the screen actually could be, uh, you could change what it was. Hmm, that could be really, really fun. Um, probably, I mean, not something we're gonna get done in, in 10 minutes, but uh, that could be a really, really fun thing to do and, and something that could be a lot of fun to play with. Um, yeah, I can, I can definitely tell this is gonna go well for me. Uh, but here's the thing, chat, here's how this is gonna work. Uh, you get to troll me all you want, but don't you put this submarine on my guest faces. Uh, you you can disrespect me all you want, but in this house, we, we respect our teachers. Um, <laughs> I'm so... I, 
what was I thinking? Why did I think this was going to be a good idea? What, what part of me was like, you know what would be great? Let's let the chat put stuff on my face. <laughs> yeah, it's going to definitely need safe regions. Um, but I will, I think for now this will be okay. And you know, if, if you all, uh, refuse to respect, I will, I'll take it away. That's how it's going to go. If you, if you, if you abuse, if you abuse my guests by putting submarines on their faces, I will um, take away your toys. That's how it's going to work. Uh, is this on GitHub somewhere? Yes, it is. It is on Learn with Jason slash Scenes, so you can go check that out there. The code is up now. Um, you can see the the commit that we did is is all here. Um, so this is you know it. This is pretty quick and dirty. I I did a lot of. Um, kind of messing with things to to get them to work. This especially, I think, is not... This is code that I would refactor before I would... if Like, if I was doing this at work. Um, so, but I do think, like, down here, this feels usable. So I think I could, uh, I could figure out how I was going to manage that um, and kind of refactor. Like, I can even see this. This is actually pretty usable. So um, I could, I could move some of this out into into an even like slightly more clean abstraction but here's what i think is fun about this what, what we were able to do could you get off my face come on get out of here okay <laughs> um but so so what this uh what this has done and what i think is really cool is that it's put it's it's now kind of proven something that I was hoping for, which is that I don't need to build a bunch of really special magic stuff here to uh, to make this stuff work. But you know, actually, you know what I think is is kind of interesting. What if so? All right, we got we've got about three minutes before I'm going to shut down. I want to try something really really interesting and, and simple here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get. Um, a drawing I'm gonna get any image that I have available on my on my computer um, I'm gonna get this dumpster fire and let's take the dumpster fire and this is I believe it is a PNG so I'm gonna take this dumpster fire and I'm going to make this a thing that we can put on on the page and the way that I'm gonna do that quickly is I'm going to take the submarine and I'm going to hide that and then I'm going to paste in this dumpster fire and I'm going to put this right in the center like that okay and then drop it in call it dumpster fire and we're going to export it and here's my hope. My hope is that if I put this dumpster fire right in here, okay, and then we go into submarine.js and we say, uh, let's do a use state. There's zero chance I'm going to get this done in the amount of time that I want. So we're going to call this uh, image and set image and that'll be a use state and it'll default to submarine um, then I can use state and if the command let's see so if we can say if command and command command equals um, pet. So the 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 command we're going to allow is pet. Then I'm going to console log the uh, command because I'm not sure if we're actually going to get this. But then what we're going to do is we're going to set the image to. For now, we're going to hard code it to um, dumpster fire. Um, and and so what I what we can do is we can either set up like a, a switch But I'm actually curious if we could say like pet and then a value and just get that back or if I'm gonna have to add something um, And then I'm gonna return and then what we can do here is we can say instead of 
Um, this, we're going to set it to be a submarine. Oops, it'll be a string that gets the value of image in it. And we'll also set this to be the value of image. No, nope, that's not at all what I wanted. Um, but this one, you know what? No one would ever look at this with a, a screen reader, but I don't like, I just, just, I feel weird not doing it. So I'm gonna do that. And now what I think should happen is if I run Netlify dev, and we're gonna try this once, if it doesn't work, I will do it on another day. But what should happen is now if we go and look at this page here and y'all run pet and I'm going to say like pet dumpster it changes to a dumpster fire so now you can fly a dumpster fire around right and that's really fun but what I'm really interested in is when we sent in pet what did it give us so it said args Ooh, yeah. See, sometimes I'm a better programmer than I thought. I, I thought of this. I was like, oh yeah, I want the 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 thing to exist here. And so we have um we've got access to these args. So what I can do, and I'm gonna take exactly one second to do this, and then we're gonna shut it down for the day, is in here I can say uh we've got submarine and dumpster fire. And uh, those are going to be our pets, right? And so then we can say if uh, command, or actually we can do um, new pet equals uh, pets includes um, command args zero. it will be command args zero, or it'll be submarine. So then we can set the pet to new pet. Okay, so let's give this one try. And so now you're gonna have to call it dumpster fire to set it, but let's see if this works. So um, I am Loading it up here. We've got our submarine. Okay, somebody try changing the pet to dumpster fire with a hyphen. Let's pull it up a little bit so we can see too. Okay, now change it. Let's change it back. So I'm going to change it back to submarine. And then I'm going to try to change it to something else. When I try to change it to not real, it changes back. Oh, that's cool. Um, Eddie, yes, my code is auto formatted by Prettier on save. So when I when I make a big old mess, uh, Prettier will get rid of everything when I hit command S. So y'all, that was so fun. Okay, so I'll, I'll get this deployed after stream so that next time we'll be able to play around. I'm also probably gonna like draw a submarine and a few other things. Um, but yeah, this has been a blast. So make sure you go and check out the schedule. We've got so much fun stuff coming up. Uh, we've got just, it's so many good things. So, so please, please, please go check that out. Come hang out. Um, huge shout out to Rachel, who's been hanging out with us all day doing the live captioning. Um, it's, it's wonderful to have her here. Uh, white co captioning has been with the show for a long time now doing, doing live captioning right on the homepage every, every week. Uh, that is made possible by Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura, all of whom are pitching in to make this show more accessible to everybody. Uh, it helps me keep the keep the wheels on, learn with Jason. So very, very much appreciate y'all for uh, for kicking in. Make sure you go to the homepage. You can click these links and go check these things out. It is a lot of fun. I love these tools. Um, I think you'll have a lot of fun with them as well. I think that's it, y'all. Who should we go and raid today? Let's, let's go figure it out. Uh, let's go see who is on. I'm gonna go to browse, live channels. Who's live right now? Uh, let's look at web dev. Let's see who's doing web dev. Hey, look at that guy. Um, what do you think? What do you think, y'all? I develop things. Hello, cool Chris. What do you? 
Portfolio dev. Ooh, portfolio dev sounds fun. Let's go raid. Let's go raid LL Cool Chris. That that seems like a good call. So let's uh, let's go make this happen. We're gonna raid, and with that, we will see you next time, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Uh, see you on what? What is it? Today's Thursday. We'll see you on Tuesday. Later.